We didn't go into Billy's restaurant kitchen because like all professional cooks, we get sick and tired of fine, fine French cuisine. What we like to sometimes, have a few jars and cook something really simple. And you know this is genuinely my home because of the sign. You all understand that, no prats in the kitchen. And what Billy and I do, when we finished a hard night's work mucking about really working, we like to have a bit of sliced old beef and a few jars. But it's a very funny dish to make this, isn't it? What it is. exactly is it? It's a great cork dish. Um, it's spiced beef, Keith, it's called. What they do is they corn the beef, put it into water and a proportionate measure of, say, saltpetre, uh, things like that. In fact, I'm going to interrupt ourselves here. This is, in fact, the third take we've done because the director still hasn't understood what corned beef is. He actually thinks it's got corn in it. Okay, Billy, in five simple words, what is corned beef? Uh, the expression corned beef means that the, the beef is pickled in a solution of salt, peter, water, and maybe salt extracts. Uh, yeah. um, and the reason you corn it is because besides giving it this beautiful flavour, it also tenderises the meat. Sure. And then after you've done that for about a week, Indeed. You mix it up with all this explosive looking mixture of gum powder. Right, Keith, what we've got here, as you well know, you have your ground black pepper, your white pepper, your cayenne, your allspice, your nutmeg, you've got your brown sugar, your cinnamon, your juniper berry, your saltpetre, and your ground cloves. And, and you whack the whole you do in the, like that. You do. Okay. Get a fistful of it in your yeah. hand like that. And you'd see it on butcher stalls now, especially around December, the end of uh, November, December, and it would look really well kind of decorated like that, all on the stoves. Fabulous. Right. And that would then go into a wooden barrel or an earthenware bowl would. for what, a month? Or? Indeed, Keith, yeah, approximately a month and uh, rolled and, and redone. Sometimes that they also use is the mixture from the corning, the, the water extract with all the spices put together and uh, kind of filmed around it. Right, right. Yeah. So that's, that is now a magic television that's three months old now, not off, three months cured. It goes in, Richard, come here, into a simple vat of water, root vegetables, leeks, celery, I um, haven't got any leeks in there, onions and a bouquet garnies, a little faggot of herbs, as we call it in English programmes, faggots. Got a few of those. That goes in there. OK. And then, because we're very strong chaps, we just lift that up. Actually, Billy, you go up, and we'll see you in three hours' time. Yeah. Ah, there you are. I've just been uh, microwaving this mashed potato, which I cooked earlier. Very useful thing to do. Nicest kitchen, isn't it? The first time I've ever cooked here, because normally, of course, my staff attend to all these kind of things, but I thought to give you the real impression of being a genuine, simple human being, I'd do it myself. And because we like simple things, the good thing to eat with um, spiced beef is a thing called cold cannon, which is mashed potato, hot chopped cooked cabbage, okay, over here a bit, Richard, difficult for you, I'm sure, chopped shallots, or a bigger part, not shallots, scallions or spring onions, we put a handful of those straight into the mashed potato like that, whisk it up a little bit, stir them in, then we put in some hot milk, there are no quantities or measurements to this, you do this the way it sort of feels what? right, and by the way, you don't particularly, back to me please, Richard, you don't particularly cook this for a dinner party, it's the sort of thing you do when friends drop in unexpectedly and you've got just potatoes and onions and cabbage lying around the place, you know. Right, whisked up in quite well there. Then some of this lovely Irish cabbage, hearty cabbage, slightly boiled and chopped fine, like that. Better have a taste at this stage. Go, but no seasoning, need seasoning. Salt, pepper. Your beef doing all right over there, Billy, by the way. Yeah, not too bad, Keith. Oh, quick yeah. up. Excellent. Um, a handful of parsley into that. Now, I still think that's a bit stodgy. Can you see that all right? Nice mixture, though. I'm going to add now some melted butter, good cholesterol, heart attack-inducing stuff. Please don't take me seriously. I don't wish a heart attack on anybody, really. But this is the sort of thing that doctors write to me about and say, you'd be much better off just having a, a lettuce leaf and a plate of beans. But I don't go with that. Well done, my dear. Right. That is the cold cannon. Off with the lid there, see how they're getting on. Oh boy. Richard, that is superb. Doesn't that smell good? It smells like an oriental spice parlour, you know. But as opposed to a simple Irish kitchen. Get rid of that over there. Whack it up, Billy Madeira, because you ought to have a slice of it. Thing is, Richard, please, while Billy's taking that out, this is traditionally cooked on Christmas Eve. When you come back from Mass, you have a slice hot. The main deal is let it cool until tomorrow and have it for breakfast with a pint of stout before you start your Christmas Day celebrations. Fantastic. You carving? Yep. I'll dash up some uh, 
some potato here. But the trouble is with this, you know, it's a superb dish, but it isn't the kind of thing that the high-flying punters in smart restaurants are going to get, are they? A, they think it's not good enough, and B, the cook isn't going to offer it to them. OK, let's look back after the last couple of years. We've come a long way now. Not alone have we, um, kind of, have we gone through the French era of dishes, etc., but a lot of our own dishes, um, traditional dishes, maybe thanks to people like you, we're bringing these back to the fore. Um, time will give us a chance to put these back on the menu. I have no hesitation. Your programme is going to do that. The awareness is going to be made. Because that is flavour. It's something that's, that's not in the books. You know, God only knows probably. But I, I do think it does stand a good chance. It does stand a good chance. It's mm. tasty. It looks well to the eye. Yeah. Um, maybe in a cold start, starter with various little types of salads around it. Um, you know, someone could take it from there. Mm. i tell you what it does do to you. It gives you a brilliant thirst, doesn't it? Because mm. it is very, very spicy, mm. this beef. Oh. Slancher. Uh, Slanter stock. Slanter stock. <laughs> <laughs> good, isn't it? That's very good. <laughs>